How's everybody doing today? Are we like on the web or something here? Or we're just recording? Sorry? It, it will be, eventually. Oh, hello, eventually, web folks. <laughs> Father, we thank you so much for this time that we have in your presence today to hear your word, to experience your presence. Holy Spirit, we thank you for divinely orchestrating this whole entire day. Not one person will leave here the same. In Jesus' name. But will be changed. Our eyes will be opened. Spirit of revelation will flow through this place like a mighty rushing river. We'll see things more clearly than we ever have before. We'll have understanding. We'll have knowledge and we'll walk in the light of that. We will fulfill your destiny for our lives in Jesus' name. Everybody that agreed shouted. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeehaw or something. Turn around and high five somebody and tell them I'm glad you came today and then you can take your seats. <clears throat> Sorry? Um, yeah, we can do that. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I want to give a special thank you to Pastor Edward Taylor for having me come in on such short notice. And uh, I'm uh, leaving, as I said, on uh, the 18th. In nine days, I'm leaving for Norway. And I'll be there for four and a half weeks. I'll be back in the States for two weeks and then back for... Um, a while at that time and, and like I said I'll be back and forth a lot but I just had some open dates and I called him or sent him an email or whatever text and I said hey I'm I'm here I got some dates available if you want me to come I'll come it's just about a four hour drive or so from my home in um, wherever it's at Jefferson and supposed to close this Saturday and so I'll find out tomorrow if that's all gonna sort out and I just appreciate you believing God with me on that yeah. And because uh, I need the house to close, I need to have that uh, behind me. And then all of my furnishings, I'm giving everything away. Yeah. And I'm just going to basically keep what I have to have for the office. I'm going to put that in the storage for now. And then whatever I can put in my suitcases, I'm taking to Norway with me. And just going to start over. Right. <clears throat> Amen? Yeah. And, and I, I have my vehicle. I've been kind of trying to decide what I, what I want to do in my vehicle and, and I pretty much decided that I really want to I want a financial miracle where I can pay it off it's not much I can pay it off and then I want to give it away because we believe in God for some big things yeah. over in Norway yeah. yes. amen yeah. and so I want to give it away and uh, so you can believe God with me on that and uh, anyway I've got couple of things in my heart. I thought I was going one direction then well let's start with this and, and uh, if we feel we need to go another direction we'll do that. Right. You know sometimes you kind of just need to get started in a certain direction yeah, yeah. and I mean at least do something. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Why sit we here till we die? Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's go take the city you know? Yeah. Let's go take the country. Amen. So we're gonna go take something this morning. We're going to take back everything the devil stole is what we're going to do. Yeah. I said to Pastor, Pastor Edward before the service, I said, I read Pastor Kenneth Hagin's Jr.'s book on faith takes back what the devil stole. Because we're talking about how there's usually a verse that sticks with somebody yeah. for life, you know. And, 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 and he mentioned, of course, you know, with, with Dad Hagin, it was always, I mean, he could teach on anything and Mark 11 23 is going to come out you know because he wrote it but no he didn't but <laughs> some people think he did but but he didn't really but but I mean Mark 11 23 was going to come out because it was such a revelation to him it was such a part of his yes. DNA yes. it was such a part of his belief system for me it was reading that book fake takes back what the devil stole years ago uh, from Pastor Kenneth Hagin Jr. Uh, and, and in that verse, one of the key verses he used was 2 Peter 1.3. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us 
by His own glory and goodness. It's just something that's always stuck with me for years. And uh, so, anyway, I, I got off on that because I mentioned we're going to take back what the devil stole. How many of you had the devil steal some stuff from you? Huh? Yeah. huh? Yeah. You want to take back what the devil stole from you? Yeah. And then some. Because yeah. it's more than enough there. Let me just cover this. Yeah, go. You know, we're, <laughs> regarding, regarding faith, because there's, there's so much flying around and so many opinions and thoughts and stuff, and people think that faith is all about your own needs and, and you know, your own healing and your own this and your own that and your own everything. And if that's what it is for you, then, then you're incredibly selfish. Uh -oh. I mean, just quite bluntly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If that's what it's all about, it, it's, it's just incredibly selfish, and that's wrong. But I don't believe... I find it hard to believe that someone who was born again, washed in the blood of Jesus, is only concerned about their own needs. What, what, time, do, what, time, were, what time is he normally done on Sunday mornings, by the way? 12.30? All right, I'll ask your daughter. Off the call, the liars. All right. I just wanted to find out, so ask when you... Anyway. Uh, first or <laughs> Wait, oh, your final closing. When, when is he done with his final closing? 1230. 1230. Okay. So anyway, but here, here's the, I find it hard to believe that a person who is born again, washed in the blood of Jesus, who has the love of God in their heart, is only concerned about their needs. Yeah. I believe most pers most person, most people, English is going to get very interesting in the weeks and months to come because when I get over there to Norway, I'm going to start learning Norwegian. And so this is going to get interesting. But anyway, I find it hard to believe that a person who has the love of God in their heart is only concerned about their own needs. I believe every person in this room right now, it is, it, you, you really, in your heart, you would like to do something a lot more than just pay your bills or pay your debts off yeah, yeah, or take care of your own needs or put food on your own table. You'd really like to help somebody else. You'd like to make an impact in the world for the kingdom of God. Am I in the right place or do I, or do I need to go somewhere else this morning? Am I in the right place? Come on, somebody wave at me. Wave at me if I'm in the right place. Or, of course, now I may not be talking to you. Uh, it's, you know, you may not be the one with the issue. I'm confident it's not, actually. It's the person sitting next door to you. But anyway. <laughs> but, so I want to talk just a little bit about the spirit of faith. Say the spirit of faith. Spirit of faith. Or the church name like Faith and Victory Church. Isn't that what it is? Yeah. Is that where I'm at today? Yeah, that's where you are. <laughs> All right. I, I thought it'd be kind of appropriate and okay and fitting if we talk about faith today. Sure, yeah. All right, this is kind of something that, that's been stirring in my heart lately anyway. So here we go. Have you found 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 yet? Huh? Okay, everybody look up at me. This means yes, this means no, and in India, this means okay. <laughs> Have you found 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 yet? No? Yes? yes? Did I even tell you where we were going anyway? Oh, no. I thought you was hooked up with the Holy Ghost here. Are both of these waters from me up here, by the way? <laughs> I'm taking them by faith. Yes and no. That was a little bit of Norwegian for you. <clears throat> All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13 <clears throat> it says, it is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit, say spirit. Spirit, spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Say spirit. spirit. The Greek word there is the Greek word pneuma. All right? Now let's go over, keep, keep, just keep that in mind, and flip over here. We'll establish some things, and then we're going to come back to that. You can keep your finger there if you want, or you can just look it up again if you want. That's your choice. Acts chapter 2 
and begin with verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. <clears throat> all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. Say Spirit. Spirit. Uh, King James and others say Holy Ghost. Say Ghost. Ghost. Either way is, is okay. And began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit, say Spirit, yes. enabled them. Or King James and others says gave them utterance. All right. The words, the two words in the NIV Spirit, uh, again in King James and some others is, is Ghost and Spirit. The Greek word there is the same word pneuma that we saw in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. Are you still with me? Now, I hope you're impressed with that Greek word because that's all the Greek I know. All right, that's about as far as it goes for me. <clears throat> and I'm probably not even pronouncing it right. So, now if you, we won't take time to read all of John chapters 14, 15, and 16, but I would encourage you to do that later. If you, if you look at how Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit... Jesus always referred to the Holy Spirit as a person. Say this, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. is a person. He's not an it. Huh? There's only two verses in the King James Version that, re that refers to the Holy Spirit as it. It's Romans chapter, um, I believe it's chapter 8, verses 16 and, verses, and verse 26. It said when the Spirit itself... Every other translation that I've read says the Spirit Himself. King Jimmy actually got it wrong on those two. Anyway, that goes over really big when, especially down in Georgia, in the area I'm from, because it is so King James strong down there, Jesus help them all. I guess if it was good enough for the Apostle Paul, it's good enough for them. But anyway, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I had a Christian bookstore for a while, about two and a half years, and that was the biggest devil that, I, that manifested in my stores, that what I called the King James devil. <laughs> I could deal with just about anything, but there was one day I just had to leave my store. I went to my employer and said, I'm out of here. I'll be back. And I just left. That devil manifested. I was about to kill somebody and tell God they died. <laughs> I know you've never been that way, but I'm human. I have feelings. And I was not happy that day. So I got out of there before I went off on somebody. All right, so in, in John chapters 14, 15, and 16, Jesus, in talking about the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> referred to the Holy Spirit as a person. Said again, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Is, a is a person. Said again, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. is a person. Now, what in the world does all of this have to do with 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13? I am so glad you came to ask that question today. I believe I have the answer. Turn back over to 2 Corinthians 4, 13. It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken, since we have that same spirit of faith. Say spirit. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Now, again, the, same, the Greek word pneuma here is the same Greek word that we saw in Acts chapter 2, verse 4. It was there twice. The Holy Ghost and uh, the Spirit gave them utterance, right? I believe, <clears throat> with that in mind, that we could read, we could change one word here. We could change the word spirit to person. And not do it any injustice. In fact, maybe get a little more understanding of how this whole faith thing works. Because in my observation of the Word of Faith movement, if you will, since 1986, that's been a few years, I, it, it, in a lot of cases, it seems as though people are catching the mechanics of faith. But they never really understood or caught the spirit of faith. Say the spirit of faith. Spirit. Now, 
Of course, you know, we're, Pastor and I are both Rhema grads and, and his daughters and maybe some other Rhema graduates here in, in, in the church today. And so we're very familiar with Brother Hagen's ministry and Rhema Bible Training Center and so on. And, 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 uh, and most people, when they think of Brother Hagen, they, they think of him as a word man. Right? Thank you for that one amen. Am I, am I right or am I wrong? When most people think of Kenneth Hagin, they think of Kenneth Hagin as a word man, right? But having traveled with Brother Hagin for over five years, I observed something that I think a lot of people missed. He was just as much, and I'm not just preaching about Brother Hagin, but using him as an example to show how maybe we miss something, and if we can just catch this, we can move to a higher level. How many of you are ready to move up to a higher level? And, and this, by the way, is not dependent upon the world economy and the world system and all this stuff going on in the world. Are you with me today? Yeah. Because the world is only going to get crazier. It's only going to get more and more nuts. It's not going to get any better. I don't care who is in office or not in office. or It doesn't matter what. The, we're in the end of the end. We're in the last of the last days. It, it, the world is only going to get crazier. Amen. Read the Bible. Amen. It's getting nuts. And it's just going to get more nutty. Amen. Amen. I know you want to shout and jump around the room and run and, and swing from the chandeliers on that one. But it's true nonetheless. Right? So, <clears throat> but, but yet, so this is not dependent upon the world system. We can, regardless of what happens in the world, we can live on a higher standard. We can still be the most effective for the kingdom of God. I was speaking with someone yesterday. And they were quite frustrated about the whole money issue because they have huge vision. And they were saying, if I had millions, this is what I would do. And my thought to that is, well, then let's get millions. If that's what you really want to do, let's get millions. Let's find out why we don't have millions. If that's the kind of vision you have, let's find out why we don't have millions. Let's make whatever adjustments we've got to make, and let's get the millions so we can shake the world for the gospel of Jesus Christ while we're here on the earth. I'm preaching better than you amen in today. Amen. <laughs> Because again, we're not a bunch of selfish folks. We want to spread the love of Jesus to the whole entire world. Amen? Amen? So we don't need to be limited in anything that we do for the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> All right, so in my observation, Brother Hagen was a word man, but he was also... A Holy Ghost man. Spirit led, my brother said, but what I'm saying is he was a Holy Ghost man. He was just as much a Holy Ghost man as he was a Word man. The reason why he had the level of revelation that he did and the reason why it was so real to him was because of his intimacy with the person of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Are you with me today? Yeah. Now, back to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Am I doing okay? Yeah. Everybody doing all right? Yeah. All right. Verse 13, let's read it again. It is written, now we're going to change that word spirit to person. Remember that? Because yeah. it's the same Greek word pneuma here that we found over in Acts chapter 2. And in Acts chapter 2, it's talking about when the Holy Spirit fell on the day of Pentecost. And we looked over in John chapter 4, we didn't look, but we referred to John chapter 14, 15, 16, and found that the Holy Spirit is a person, right? All right, so now we're just changing the word spirit to person. Now let's read this verse. It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken, since we have that same person of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Where does the spirit of faith come from? I believe. The spirit of faith 
comes not by memorizing a bunch of scriptures, although that's good. It's a good thing if you memorize scriptures, good faith scriptures, pertaining to whatever it is that, that you may be struggling with or you're believing God for. It's good to memorize scriptures, but I don't believe that's where the spirit of faith comes from. It doesn't come from reading somebody's book and studying the methods that they use to get what they got. Yeah, right. Huh? Amen. Studying that, you get the mechanics of faith. Watch this. The spirit of faith comes from our intimacy with the person of faith. Huh? Let me share another scripture with you. Flip over. Keep your finger there. We may come back to it. Flip over to Mark chapter 11. And verse... 22. Mark 11 and verse 22. In the NIV Bible, it says, Have faith in God. Well, it's, see, is that uh, the King James on the screen there? Yeah. Also says, Have faith in God. Now, it's my understanding that if, you ha if we had a more correct translation of Mark 11, 22, what he was literally saying was, have the faith of God. Hmm? Now, let me ask you a question. If you had the faith of God, you think you could do something? This is not a trick question. Again, everybody, everybody look up here. This means yes. This means no. In India, this means okay. Now, not this. This. <laughs> I've been there three times. That's why I learned, I, how I learned to do that. I got to India and everybody's going around like this. I'm like, what is this all about? And finally, my pastor friend educated me. This means yes. This means no. And in India, this means okay. <laughs> I was like, okay. Yes, help us, Jesus. Aren't you glad you came today to learn that? I'll never be the same. Hey, Amen. I told you, you would never be the same. All right, so where are we at? 22. 20, 22. Have the faith of God. If you had the faith of God, do you believe you could do something? If you were smacked up beside the head with some kind of sickness or disease and the doctors gave you days to live, if you had the faith of God, you believe you could knock that thing out? If you could really operate and function in the faith of God, you really honestly believe you could knock that thing out? Huh? You ever faced a financial mountain? Mountain of debt? You believe if you had the faith of God, you could conquer that thing? You really believe that? Amen. Now let me ask you some other questions. You have, where, where is the Holy Spirit? Come on, you know this. You're awfully quiet on me now. Where is the Holy Spirit? Say this. He's in me. Amen. Or now I'm going to, I just gave you the answer. So I'm going to ask you the question, and you can answer now that you know the answer for sure. All right? Where is the Holy Spirit? Amazing. Is the Holy Spirit God? Yes. yes. Does the Holy Spirit have the faith of God? Is the Holy Spirit living in you? Yes. Does the Holy Spirit have the faith of God? Yes. If the Holy Spirit is living in you, then where is the faith of God? 
See, we're all concerned about our faith. Or if I could just have enough faith, I believe I could be healed. If I had enough faith, I believe I could believe I could call in some lunch money and I believe I'd be able to eat lunch today. Praise God. Amen. We're all concerned about our faith. But what if we learn how to operate and function in the faith of God? Huh? Did I come to the right place today? Is this faith and victory, church? Be nice if y'all would respond like it is. All right, back over to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Talking about the spirit of faith, but we change the word spirit to the word person. And I just I presented this to you that, that the person that what he's talking about here really is the person of faith. And if we live out of our intimacy with the person of faith, from that intimacy is going to come the spirit of faith. And really from that place, we begin operating in the, in the faith of God. Now, one way, of course, that we fellowship with the person of faith is by praying in the Holy Ghost. Now let me say this about praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost does not impress God. Huh? He doesn't impress God. Oh, well, he, he, he prayed in the Holy Ghost for two hours today. Maybe we should do a little something-something for him. Let's help him out. No, it doesn't impress God. Wow, ten hours today. Woo! He's going to get a special jewel in his crown. No, it doesn't impress God. Not one bit. Watch this. Praying in the Holy Ghost does not change God. Praying in the Holy Ghost does not make God decide that finally He's going to stop withholding this from you because now you've prayed in the Holy Ghost enough. So now He's going to give it to you. Huh? Now, I told you almost every time I preach, I get to my favorite scripture. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. How do we get knowledge of Him? The more you have intimacy with Him, the more aware of Him you are. Huh? When you pray in the Holy Spirit, let, 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 before I get to that, let me get back to 2 Peter 1, 3. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness, so He's already given us everything we need. Where is it? It's in us. Everything you need for life and godliness, you have in you right now. You don't have to pray to get it down from heaven. You don't have to break through the heavens. You don't have to somehow connect with heaven. You already have heaven in you. You don't have to have God come down. Oh, God, come down. We're here in this miserable, pitiful situation. I would need you to help us, Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, come. You don't need him to come. He's already in you. I just want to get closer to God, brother. He's in you. How much closer do you need to be? Hello? Are you with me today? Are we doing all right? That's how Brother Hagin was able to do what he did. He lived out of his intimacy with the person of the Holy Spirit. It's because he lived out of his intimacy with the person of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one who led him to Mark eleven twenty three. 23. The Holy Spirit is the one who led him into the revelation of truth that absolutely set him free and brought him up off of the bed of sickness. And he lived another, what was it, 70 years? He lived another 70 years beyond what the doctor said he would live. 
You say what you want to about him. I think I'm going to listen to him a little bit. Amen. Supposed to be dead and lives another 70 years? I think the brother had something to say. Amen. Now I don't put him on a pedestal or put him on a throne or anything stupid like that. Huh? Yeah, yeah, right, right. Go ahead. But when we learn to live out of our intimacy with the person of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of faith is not going to be a problem. Huh? Uh -huh. Yeah. You can go through mechanics all day long. But until you live out of your intimacy with the person of the Holy Spirit, it's just mechanics is all it is. Behavioral modification, that's all it is. But when you live out of your intimacy with the person of the Holy Spirit, He changes your soul. 3 John 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your... There's the problem right there. The problem is the soul. He will tell you what to do. Well, why don't he talk to me? Because you ain't listening for some reason. He's always talking. We're just distracted. That's all. Huh? So then here's this $1.2 million. What do I do, Mother Preacher? What do I do? $1.2 million. I don't know what to do. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Why pray in the Holy Ghost? Because he know what to do. Amen, Brother Keith. Thank you so much. I'm glad you came today. I'm going to buy you lunch today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Woo. What do you do when you get the report from the doctor? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Why pray in the Holy Ghost? Because he knows what to do. And when you pray in the Holy Ghost again, it doesn't change the Holy Ghost. It doesn't change God. It doesn't make God decide to heal you. It, it, it helps you to be more aware of what's happening on the inside of you. It's, it's helping you to fine tune to what the Holy Spirit is already saying. Listen, God is not withholding anything from anyone. That's right. He's already given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Amen. And the way we get to know Him is through fellowship with Him. Soon and very soon, I'm going to be getting married. I don't know when. I've already put the ring on her finger. We had a date set. It was just a crazy, stressful situation. It wasn't God. All the stress, I mean. The stress is, stress is not of God. Right. Yeah. So if it's a whole stressful situation, stop it. Yes. I had somebody tell me, well, if you put the ring on a finger and you don't have a date, you're not really engaged. I said, well, I guess I'm not engaged in, but I still put the ring on a finger. She minds. <laughs> don't even think about messing with her. I'm a Bible-toting preacher that packing heat. I will knock on... No, I'm messing with you. <laughs> anyway, I said, forget it. What are we going to do? We're going to pray in the Holy Ghost. Why? Because he knows how to put the whole thing together. He knows all about it. He knows who needs to be there. He knows where it needs to be. He knows when it needs to be. But, but watch this. In this time... We are spending a lot of time talking. Why? Because we're getting to know each other. I know that was a deep revelation. <laughs> Nobody could have figured that one out, so it's a good thing I showed up today. Amen. <laughs> Your preacher's a wise guy. <laughs> Pastor wise guy. Well, when you pray in the Holy Spirit, 
You just get to know him better. It doesn't change him. It changes your perspective. When you pray in the Holy Spirit, you begin to see things the way he sees it. You begin to perceive things the way he perceives them. And in that whole process, if there's anything that needs to be changed in you, guess what? He's going to show you, and he'll grace you to change it. Hmm? Are you with me? So what do you do when you don't know what to do? Pray in the Holy Ghost. What do you do when you do know what to do? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Why? Because there still may be something you're missing. Don't ever think you've got it all figured out and you don't need to pray in the Holy Ghost now. No, baby, you spend your life praying in the Holy Ghost. Well, now, now, brother, we, we have grace now. We have grace, and because we have grace, we don't need to pray in the Spirit and, uh, because that's works. <laughs> Listen, here's what I have to say to that. All right. You remember when you, read, when you read Paul's writing, sometimes he's saying the Lord said or the Holy Ghost said, and sometimes he's saying, this is me talking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. This right here, this is me talking. Go ahead. All right. Yeah. I believe I'm right, because usually I am, but no, I'm messing. <laughs> I'm messing. This is me talking. All right. Praying in the Holy Ghost works for me. All right. If this works, please leave me alone. Because it's working. Yeah. Amen. I have, because I have grace, I can pray in the Holy Spirit. Right. Even when I don't want to, I can tap into grace. And grace enables me and strengthens me and encourages me to pray in the Holy Ghost. Yes. Right. So if this works, let me work. Because <laughs> it's working for me. <laughs> Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you, Pastor. You... Y'all get anything out of this tonight? Yeah. Tonight, today? Yeah. All right. I have no idea what I'm going to do tonight. I had no idea really what I was going to do today. I kind of thought I did, maybe, but I never really do. Because when I know what I'm going to do, I know that everything could change by the time I get out here. So I have no idea what I'm going to do tonight. But I do know this. The Holy Ghost is going to be here. Yes, yes. Because he lives in me and I'm coming tonight. Yeah. And so I know he's going to be here. All right? And I know we're going to have a great time in the presence of God. I may preach. I may not preach. I may sing all night. May, I may not sing at all. I don't know. We're just going to show up and, and I'm going to do everything the Holy Spirit tells us to do tonight. I'll do my best. At least. All right? But as far as I know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you a personal illustration of how the end of 2007, I called in $30,000. Who would like to know how I did that? So, uh, so tonight, as far as I know, unless the Holy Spirit leads us in another direction, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, I'm going to show you how. Very simple thing. Very simple. It's so, so simple even I can understand it. So it, it is, it is a, I'm going to show you a practical thing I did, but we're also going to talk some more about the intimacy with the person of the Holy Spirit because really that's, without that, it's just a bunch of mechanics. Huh? And you can just hope it's going to work. But when you live out of your intimacy with the Holy Spirit, you tap into the spirit of faith, you get to the point where, where you are so much more aware of what's happening on the inside of you. Then, then you can start talking to what's around you. Huh? See, a lot of people are talking to what's around them, and they're working mechanics of faith, but they don't really know who they are. They have no clue who is in them. Well, they know, but they don't know Him. They're not living out of that intimacy with Him. Are you with me today? Yeah. Pastor Adam, am I doing okay? Yeah, am I doing all right? Yeah. Okay, just check it. Because they just kind of, I'm a day, amen, and every now and then, but they're kind of sitting there looking at me this morning like.
Do you have a good time today? Yes. Again, we're going to just be led by the Holy Spirit tonight and do whatever he says do. We're going to have a great time. Yes. It has been enjoyable today. I'm messing with you some. <laughs> but we're going, to, we're going to have a great time. Did you have a good time this morning? Yes. You get anything out of this? Yes. Well, I'm going to lay hands on some folks tonight. And, and Who knows what we're going to do? I don't know. Please, come and take it, Pastor Ed. Love you, buddy. Hallelujah. The chest bomb. <laughs> <laughs> My brother got a big chest up there. <laughs>